I'm Dr. Sugar, your internet doctor, here to continue our discussion on postpartum depression. I will go into a lot more detail on the symptoms and the causes of postpartum depression. So if you're ready, let's get started with your dose of medical inspiration. Every mom knows the feeling of a new baby coming into their lives. This event is probably one of the most life-changing events in a woman's life. And there is a myriad of emotions associated with this process. Excitement, joy, love, nervousness, and some anxiety as well. Thoughts like, will I be able to provide for this human being? Wow, I'm responsible for every aspect of making sure this precious child becomes a well-adjusted and responsible adult. Thoughts like these are quite common, but if these thoughts and feelings of anxiety persist to an extent that they interfere with normal daily routine, it may be wise to seek professional help. As reported by the Department of Health and Human Services, the signs and symptoms of postpartum depression are very similar to major depression and include a lot of things that I'm going to mention now. So things like feeling restless or moody, feeling sad, hopeless, or even overwhelmed perhaps crying a lot, or having no energy or motivation. Eating can be affected as well in both ways, eating too little or eating too much. Likewise, sleep can be affected. Perhaps you're not able to sleep or you want to sleep all the time. Having trouble focusing or making decisions can also be troublesome. People also sometimes have memory problems, or they have feelings of worthlessness, or they feel guilty about things. Oftentimes they can lose interest in things that used to bring them pleasure in the past. So activities that you used to enjoy now no longer bring much ple pleasure. People also may withdraw from friends and family. And they may be having physical complaints as well, such as headaches, stomach problems, or other aches or pains that just don't go away. Now, experts recommend, and I would agree, that it is best to consult a physician if one or more of these symptoms have lasted more than two weeks. Signs and symptoms of postpartum psychosis, which is a much more serious disease, can include confusion and disorientation, as well as hallucinations or delusions. People may also exhibit paranoia, and they may even have feelings or thoughts about harming themselves or harming the baby. So it's very, very important to remember that postpartum psychosis is very, very rare, but when it does occur, it puts the life of the mother, the baby, and sometimes even other loved ones at very high risk. If these symptoms are identified in a close friend or relative, it would be best to talk to a professional about these concerns immediately. One reads chilling reports about mothers who have snapped and either committed suicide, murder, or even drowned their babies. It's horrible to hear these stories in the news. And in these cases, prevention is definitely very, very, very important. So don't wait. If you're concerned about these symptoms in a loved one, seek help immediately. Now, what causes postpartum psychosis? According to the National Institutes of Health, there's no single cause for postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis for that matter. Physical, emotional, and lifestyle factors may all play an important role. One thing to consider is the physical changes that occur in the body. Remember, after childbirth, there is a dramatic drop in estrogen as well as progesterone, and this may contribute to postpartum depression. In addition, the hormones produced by your thyroid gland also may drop sharply, which can cause tiredness, fatigue, and depression. Changes in your blood volume, blood pressure, immune system, and metabolism after the birthing process may also lead to fatigue and mood swings. Another thing that we have to consider are the emotional factors. Sleep deprivation and feeling overwhelmed are common with a newborn at home. With his or her constant demands for food and caring, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Due to the lack of sleep and fatigue, the body and the mind have trouble handling even minor problems. It is also common to feel anxious about your ability to care for a newborn. 
new moms often feel less attractive or struggle with a sense of a new identity in this new role. Finally, we should consider lifestyle influences. Many lifestyle factors can lead to postpartum depression, including a demanding baby or older siblings in the home, difficulties with breastfeeding, just pure exhaustion from lack of sleep. There also may be financial problems or lack of support from your partner or other loved ones. Any of these factors or a combination of all of these factors can contribute to postpartum depression. A family history of depression or a previous personal history of major depression also puts women at a higher risk for postpartum depression. So how do you know if you have postpartum depression? Let's talk a little bit about diagnosis and testing. There really is no single test to diagnose postpartum depression. The diagnosis is more subjective in nature and made through a series of questions and reports. Doctors often have their patients complete a questionnaire during office visits to look for signs of depression and risks or uh, things that are going on in your life which may put you at higher risk of having depression. So what happens if you receive the diagnosis of postpartum depression? Well, the prognosis is really very good. Studies indicate that treatment with psychotherapy or medication, or perhaps both, has very, very good results. I'm Dr. Sugar. Be sure to watch part three of our series on postpartum depression. In part three, I will go into a lot more detail on the specific treatment options available. Make sure to watch, and I'll see you there. Sugar.